fallen empires. They sit around, not doing anything, you can poke them with a stick, but nothing really happens until certain triggers in the late game are met. Fallen empires are not to be underestimated because they can be exceptional powerhouses that are incredibly powerful, unless, of course, you attack them in the right way. There's five flavors of them, four quote-unquote normal ones uh, that are grouped in versions of two. They are opposing, uh, set by op opposing ethics traits, and one mechanical one that has a very special function that was introduced when contingency was added to the game. Now, like I said, they are uh, they are strapped into two groups of two opposing ethics. We got the spiritualists and the materialists, and the xenophobes and the xenophiles. This will be important later. First of all, we're going to be taking a look at the features of these fallen empires and how to counter them first of all is the spiritualists what do they do well they um they never open up their borders they get a, a whole array of gaia worlds that you probably should not be touching at all because they will try to cleanse you which is very very annoying because every once in a while like oh there's a gaia world over there i would really like to colonize that only to see that uh, holy war planet button that is uh, attached to them and then you're like well i'll leave it alone for now uh like i said they will uh, never open their borders and uh yeah they are uh rather annoying to deal with because they will very rarely do anything they won't give you any special missions and if they do it will be involving other empires uh you know stopping them from researching synthetics because they do not like the soulless husks that are mind uploads if they go to do a war which is rather uh, rarely it's only to cleanse any occupied holy worlds that they have because xeno feats on ground here is clearly not a kosher situation interestingly enough they're the only fallen empire where all the pop pops are actually working rather than being layabout hedonists plus the capital wall of celestial throne will make a fine addition to your collection now weaknesses what are they weak at how to counter them what should you do in case you want to get your hands on their gaia worlds well first of all they are strong all rounders that generally focus on missiles that is devastator torpedoes and whirlwind missiles point defense support craft are highly recommended in this particular scenario of course they'll have strike craft as well so throw a bit of flak on there generally destroyers supporting battleships is a very good choice here the main weapon here is the focused arc emitter which is an insane amount of splash damage to anything um, that is not hull or not armor and shields because they will penetrate those effortlessly so just put a ton of crystal plating on your ship and you should be fine in terms of defense they use mostly size shields so ignoring them using mass arc emitters on your own so mass battleships with anti-missile support should do the trick here as are all like all the other fallen empires only have 3500 hull points and they are focused arc emitters in large amounts should splash those relatively quickly one thing that is important to note here is that all their stations are all about plasma weapons so stay at range use mass shields and you'll be fine now then there is the other one materialists the polar opposites of the spiritualist they will like you and they will open their borders if you get into their good grace they're not particularly specials uh, special any requests will generally involve you giving one of your scientists away because of their superior brain which is clearly wasted on you uh, they almost never go to war, they're overly friendly, and their capital, the Font of Knowledge, is an Ecumenopolis, the only Fallen Empire um, world in the game that is one. And most of their pops just sit around being hedonists, basically breeding, uh, breeding a new slanesh through their depravity, as robots do all their job. Their uh, navy is very disrupt uh, disruptor-based, no need to bring any point defense here, but some flak, of course, is useful to take out their attack craft. Also using tachyons, so a strong mix of shields and crystal plates should be fine in general. Once again, bypassing the shields paramount, so the one-to-shot arc emitter build should do just fine. Also being supported by those flak destroyers or corvettes. You could hypothetically do devastator builds here using a ton of torpedoes to um, basically make them shoot your corvettes before their battleships, but that is pretty much secondary here. Then, the xenophobes, the infamous xenophobes, the kinetic boys, they don't really like it if you expand your territory too close to them. And they will go to war to rectify this problem. Do never, ever, ever 
get too close so they will cleanse your worlds as long as they're on their borders. They will never ask you for anything. They just want to be left alone. And they tend to spawn an absolutely massive shield which may or may not include titans. They also really like enslaving people so they can sit on the collective asses and do nothing all day aside from hating everybody that is not them. Now, in terms of countering them, they're all about the DACA, massive kinetic weapons with a mixture of strikecraft. So, in this particular case, armor is the name of the game. Massive armors on your ship versus these guys will save your collective asses. As before, mass battleships with our committers uh, counter them pretty hard. But their main weakness here is, uh, the main weakness in this setup is their Titan design, which is all about shields and strike craft, so make sure you have some flak destroyers with you to take care of them. If you can't field any our committers, uh, anti-shield weapons should do just fine. Then finally, of the normal types are the Xenophiles, which will, unlike the Xenophobes, ask you for many things. To put it in per into perspective, they're basically the Pokemon trainers of Stellaris, because they just have to catch them all, and they'll ask you for pops to put on their worlds, for safekeeping in, keep in case you get a bad case of the extinction. Their capital world has three Gaia worlds, which are rather nice, and just like materialists, they don't really get a lot of work done themselves, because they have robots for everything so yeah uh rather interesting they have got heavy kinetic weapons here with some lasers thrown into the mix so a mixture of defenses mostly armor should be enough to take them out and once again our committers uh with anything that bypasses shields is great here and that wraps pretty much all the normal ones then we have of course the mechanical one which can, which um basically exists for one reason and one reason only and well they are anti-contingency uh, robots. If the contingency does not spawn, they have a chance of going rogue, and basically they will try to murder bot everything nearby. So yeah, the anti-contingency fallen caretakers, and um, yeah, they they'll they'll do stuff to your empire every so often. Uh, most likely, they want to give you vaccines, which have a reasonable chance of working. They have three ring worlds in various states of decay, uh, with the fourth one being completely to be destroyed. And to be honest, it's better just to capture them and then use the resources of these ring worlds to fight the contingency on your own terms they really like lasers and disruptors so a mixture of shields and plates are good here as well as the focus star commuter once again in order to take them out so you've decided to go to war with a fallen empire. Uh, this is, of course, something that you want to do sooner or later because their resources are immense and incredibly useful. Uh, what do you need to do here? Well, it's very important to note that fallen empires cannot, under any circumstance, reinforce their fleet. They cannot build any colonies either, but them not being able to uh, construct any new ships is very important because it gives you a leg up. Their lethargic leadership civic, as well as their empire in decline civic, does not allow them to do so. And this basically means that you can pick off one fallen empire before the other ones start to wake up. What does that mean when the other ones start to wake up? Well, if you have one fallen empire world in your possession, and you have a fleet of at least 50k, then there is a chance of other fallen empires to fall up, and they will uh, wake up within a period of about 50 years. So, at that point, you may want to go out and just knock them all down a peg, because you do not want to get into a situation where a war in heaven starts to come loose. Now, the war in heaven by itself, basically, if we talk about the opposing traits from earlier, if the spiritualists and the materialists wake up, they will go to war with each other, and the xenophobes and the xenophiles will do the same. And that right there is something you really want to avoid. So what you generally want to do is, if there's fallen empires within your space, generally you want to take out either the spiritualists or the xenophiles, or the materialists and the xenophiles, and just leave the spiritualists and the xenophobes doing whatever, just so you can avoid a total war in space, which is not something that you want to get into because the mechanics behind it are rather annoying. The war in heaven basically forces everybody to uh, side with one faction, which is one of the fallen empires, and sometimes, of course, you can say, hey, I don't want to get involved, and then a third faction starts as well, but it is a war to the death. Uh, if one if one of the fallen empires dies, the war is automatically over, and all the territory gets split between the other empires, and that's something you want to keep in the back of your head. But yeah, the big problem with fallen empires and engaging their space is not so much their fleets, you can counter those relatively easily, it's actually their stations. Their stations do a gigantic amount of damage for what they are, and you want to stay at range 
things from them as much as possible. Sieging them down is incredibly important and you want to make sure that you do not engage these stations at point blank range because they will wreck your fleets. Please be aware of that. In the meantime, though, uh, this has been a overview of fallen empires and how to counter them slash engage them. We're going to go into the awakened empires some other time. But now for now, we're going to go and wrap it up here. If you felt this was useful to you and you want to hear more about fallen empires and maybe even see some more fallen empires, give your suggestions in the comments below and we're going to go and wrap it up here. But yeah, until next time, take good care of yourselves and as always, each other.